uh, this word today. Um, before I do, though, I'll, I'll mention, and many of you were here last Sunday, and I mentioned to you last Sunday, uh, I taught about anger. And I told you that in my uh, uh, growing up years, I was extremely angry toward my dad at 16, 17, in those years, and 15, 14. And my passionate drive was to uh, my, live my life with a passion. It was the last thing I did. I was going to whip my old man's behind. I hated my father as a teenager, uh, and I, uh, I told you about as uh, many nights I would lay in bed and squeeze the grip that I worked out in the weight room every day, and uh, I was going through a box of old stuff out of my storage container the other day, and look what I found. That's the actual grip that I used as a teenager. Many a night laying in bed, counting, praying, listening to my mom and dad arguing, saying, one day, old man, sad to say, unfortunately, that day did come, but I squeezed that thing, Lord have mercy. Just a little gentle reminder for me. I thought you might appreciate seeing that. Just I found it, and uh, I thought it was kind of, I don't mean that, maybe nothing to you, but there's a whole lot of emotion tied up in this old boy with that little red grip thing, I'll tell you that. But thank God he delivered me, and you know the rest of the story. Someone said, did you, did you forgive your father? And I said, you bet I did. And we established a relationship. And in case you don't know, this is his high school ring. I proudly wear it. 1950. We were a bunch of hillbillies from the sticks in South Carolina, North Carolina, and mountains. And my dad was the first Humphreys in all our generations to ever graduate high school. He worked full shift, eight hour day, all four years of high school in a cotton mill, every day after school. He worked every day and still graduated from high school. Went in the Navy after high school. It changed his life. Um, my dad had a tough life. Worked those four years in the cotton mill. Work, work, cotton mill. Kids, you guys in high school, you kids. He worked a full man's shift in the cotton mill. Went to school all day and never cashed a paycheck. His father drank it up. Took it away from him. Gave him $2 a week to live on. See, when we see people... We don't understand why they are the way they are. There's usually reasons. There's more to the story. And a wise man told me one time, if you're looking at a situation and the pieces of the puzzle don't fit, it might be because there's some pieces missing. So, uh, so I encourage you to be obedient. And to uh, work, I just thought I'd throw that out at you because uh, that was just a little deal that I uh, experienced and, and uh, just wanted to share that with you, my family. All right, so uh, it's cool. All right, these are the Proverbs of Solomon, David's son, king of Israel. Verse 2, their purpose is to teach people wisdom and discipline to help them understand the insights of the wise. Their purpose is to teach people to live, what's that word? Disciplined and successful lives to help them do what is right, right just, just, and fair. That's what we want to do. It's the way we want to live our life. These proverbs will give insight to the simple, knowledge and discernment to the young. So let the wise listen to these proverbs and become even wiser. Let those with understanding receive guidance. How? By exploring the meaning in these proverbs, these parables, and the words of the wise and their riddles. Last Sunday we talked about verse 17 of uh, Proverbs 14. Today we're going to go to the next verse, verse 18. Proverbs 14, 18 says, Simpletons are clothed with foolishness, but the prudent, the wise, are crowned with knowledge. I just got a question for you. What you got on? What are you wearing? You got a robe of foolishness? Yep. <laughs> got one honest dude in the room, man. 
or you got a crown of knowledge. By the way, the choice is yours. If you don't like what you're wearing, change clothes. If you don't like your hat, get another one. Simpletons are clothed with foolishness, but the prudent are crowned with knowledge. The, the message translation says it this way. I like this. Foolish dreamers live in a world of illusion. Amen. While realists got their feet planted on the ground. See, it's easy for us to live. In fact, most of us grew up living in a world of foolish dreamers, a world of illusion. Amen. Thinking, I can do this and not get caught. I can look at this website and nobody will know. I can smoke a little, drink a little, shoot a little, do a little. Nobody will know. And then you get caught. And then you get caught. And you get hooked. And you, get hooked. And you do the crime and you do the time. And you struggle and you can't figure it out. And you ask yourself, what was I thinking? You weren't. And unfortunately, the merry-go-round goes round and round and round and round. And we try to get off, and then we get back on to the next stop. And we go round and round, swimming in Lake Stupid. Riding the merry-go-round of foolishness. Living in a world of illusion. And I want to challenge you today to do something that may be a stretch for some of us here today. I want to challenge you to think. That's the hardest thing in the world to do. It is the hardest. It's a hard thing to do. But it is so important that we think. I told you before, I, bought, I got in my office, I bought a little sign at a thrift store in California for 10 cents. And it had one word on it on both sides. Think. And after I bought it, I looked down in the small print below and it was published, made, produced by IBM Corporation. <laughs> Trying to get people to think. See, we, 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 we humans act foolishly and we wear the robe of foolishness thinking that we're never going to get caught. Thinking we can do this and, and it's an illusion. It is an illusion. And I want to challenge you today, right where you are, right now, whatever you're doing, it will come to light. And I want to plead with you to think. If your spouse finds out what you're doing, she's going to be happy. He's going to be happy. If your kids know what you're doing, they're going to be happy. Your parents know what you're doing, they're going to be happy. It is an illusion to believe that you can do this and not get caught. Whatever this is. And I, I, it's foolish behavior. See, the, the New Living Translation says simpletons, foolish people. Simple, a, 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 a disabled person who doesn't get it. Thinks, oh, I, no problem, I can do this. Nobody will ever know. Number one, God knows. And yes, God does talk. <laughs> he, he, he does talk. And, and I, I just want to challenge you today to think. A realist plants their feet on the ground. The, another way he said it is the new, the new King James translation says, the simple inherit folly, but the wise are crowned with knowledge. And, and like I said, the, the issue is it, the choice is yours. You can choose to get knowledge. Or you can choose to continue to wear the beautiful flowing gown of foolishness. <coughs> you can choose. You, in fact, you do choose. Remember I told you last week what Frankie said? Three frogs sitting on a log. One decided to jump off. How many were left? I didn't say he jumped. I said he decided to jump. 
but he didn't follow through. We all struggle with this. I, I understand. How do you get knowledge? How do you get knowledge? There's only two or three ways. you got to read. Why is it we Americans have such an allergy to reading? Sir. Do you know that the person who cannot read and the person who do not, does not read are no better off? Amen. Reading... Watching, listening are the three primary ways that we learn. Touch, feeling, and tasting. But primarily, what we see, what we hear, are the two primary ways in which we read in the, in the smell factor. But the primary learning factors are what goes in our eye gate and what goes in our ear gate. And I just simply ask you a question. What are you reading every day? What are you listening to every day? Let me read to you Proverbs chapter 8. Proverbs chapter 8, verse 8. My vice is wholesome. It's come out the Bible. There is nothing devious or crooked in it. Verse 9. My words are plain to anyone with understanding. Clear to those with knowledge. He says, verse 10, choose. See, it's a choice. Choose my instructions rather than silver. Choose my instruction. Choose knowledge rather than gold. Men, let me speak to you for a moment. We men, we are driven in our careers. I get it. You ask a man, what do you do? He doesn't tell you what he does. He tells you what he is. I'm a carpenter. I'm a plumber. I'm a welder. I didn't ask you what you is, Jack. I asked you what you do. But when we, we don't even think about it. We just say, because it's our identity. And we've and we got to provide for our family. And again, I'm, I'm as guilty. I'm not throwing rocks. Please don't misunderstand this. I'm not throwing rocks. You're talking to my wife. I'm as guilty as anybody or more so. I, I, I've been a workaholic for years. And she's still trying to get me dry. <laughs> I still struggle, okay? I, all my daddy ever taught me how to do was work. And he told me he only wanted me to work a half a day. He didn't care which half I worked as long as it was just a half a day. Twelve hours. <laughs> it's a half a day. It's the way I grew up. So all I know how to do is work. And, and I struggle with that. I still do today. But we can get so caught up in our work, in our job, in our identity, who we are, that we forget to get knowledge along the way. And here's what I've done. I've made a little, just a little, little uh, goal, a little commitment, a little uh, 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 a goal that, that I want to read two chat pages a day, just two pages a day in a self-help book, uh, a non-fiction learning educational book. Now, do I get it every day? No. Do I miss it? Yes. But some days I get way more. But I try to read two days every day, two pages every day, in addition to my Bible reading. Now, luckily for me, or blessings for me, my career is, is, is leans toward education, toward reading and learning. So I read a lot for my uh, education, for, for my sermons, for my, what I do. But I try my best to read a lot that simply have to do with self-improvement. Education, learning more for, to benefit me. In fact, this morning, early this morning, I saw, saw a little deal. I was thumbing through Facebook, and I saw a little deal on an audio book that I could buy. And I bought an audio book this morning for a dollar. Uh, Dave Ramsey offered uh, an uh, 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 audio book for a dollar. And I will confess you this. If you go find Dave Ramsey's Facebook page, it's on there. But you've got to go through three or four sales pitches to get to the final deal without buying two or $300 worth of other stuff to get that book for a dollar. So, and I, and I want to just encourage you. I did it. I navigated the gauntlet and I got out spending one dollar. That's not always the case. But, uh, but I did it today, okay? And it's an audio book called I Can by my uh, mentor hero of days gone by, Zig Ziglar. A great book. It's called I Can. I encourage you to get it. And it's a great place to start in, in reading, getting you a couple of pages a day. Again, I encourage you to get knowledge of God's Word every day.
Read your Bible. Miriam and I read a book, and she's more faithful and diligent in it than I am, uh, called Jesus Calling. And it's a powerful, powerful little short devotional book. The Daily Bread. You read that. Frankie got Daily Bread figured out. He, his his uh, phone will read the Daily Bread to him every day. He push that button and it'll read it to you. Uh, you know, he it, said, well, I don't read well. Listen well. If you don't read well, listen well. It's a choice. Amen. It's not rocket science. Again, it's not deciding to do it. It's doing it. I tell people I'm working on my second million. I gave up on my first. <laughs> uh, I'm just saying. You, 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 uh, we can decide. And we can de but, you know, you, you got you to gotta figure it out. I think I'm back. I might be working on my third or fourth one by now. But anyway, uh, yeah, I, I'm just saying it's easy to, to to not do it. It's easy to not do it. Pursue knowledge. Look at that. Choose knowledge rather than gold. Because when we do that, the gold will come. Look at the next verse. Verse 11. For wisdom is far more valuable than rubies. And nothing, nothing you can desire can compare with it. All, all, all throughout God's Word. He talks about the importance of learning. Importance of learning. Now I don't know this. I'm not a psychologist. I'm not a scientist. But I read. And they tell me that when we're born, we're born with two fears. I've shared this many times. Fear of falling and the fear of loud noises. Everything else is learned. Every other fear you have is learned. Everything. You're born with a blank slate. You're born with no language. You're born with a blank hard drive. It has no operating system on it. It doesn't have the English operating system or the Chinese operating system or the, or the Spanish operating system. You're born with a blank slate. Your parents taught you the operating system they wanted you to learn. If you grew up in America, you probably learned English. If you grew up in Puerto Rico, you probably learned Spanish. If you grew up in Mexico, you probably learned Spanish. And you had to come and learn English. A few of you blessed folks kind of got to learn both of them. But if you don't stay with them, you'll lose one and, 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 and pick up the other one and stay. It's a learned art. We don't even think about it. We just did it. We went through it and, and we got it. And we don't even realize how we got it. We got it because we learned it. Those of you who have four-year-old, five-year-old kids, you understand. Mommy, what's that? What's that? What's that? Where'd that come from? How'd that? Who made that? Where's that? What's that? What's that? What? I mean, they, they're learning. But some experts say the most educated person in America are eighth graders. That was fifth graders. It's eighth graders. Well, the book I read. It's eighth graders. Because we, we peak in our vocabulary knowledge at 8th grade. And we level out and go downhill from there. Most Americans stop learning. They get enough to learn pretty much. They peak. They don't stop learning. But they peak learning at 8th grade and level out. And then slowly start to deteriorate as we get older. How are you doing? What hat you got on? You got the hat of knowledge? Are you wearing the crown of knowledge? Uh, are you wearing the crown of duh? I don't know. <laughs> I just showed up. I ain't got no idea where all my money goes. I ain't got no idea why I don't have no friends. I ain't got no idea. Hello? I heard a guy say years ago, Vern, 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 when you gonna learn? Don't let your name be Vern. I challenge you to make a commitment to take off that robe of foolishness. It's kind of hard. It is hard. If it's easy, uh, Annie have little girls doing it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it's, it's hard. It is hard. Little boys doing it. Little kids could do it. It's hard. Yes, it's hard. 
Anything worth anything is hard. But if you will make a choice and ask God for His help, He will help you. One of the most powerful passages of Scripture in the Bible, as far as I'm concerned, is found in the book of Romans, chapter 12. In Romans chapter 12, the Apostle Paul lists, the, this ver these two verses literally changed my entire life, changed my relationship with God. Verse 1 says, So dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all He's done for you. So in, in the program we talk about surrender. The, the step two, I think it is, to surrender control of your life to God. As you understand it. That's surrendering your body. Saying, God, my body is yours. I'm giving my body to you. So, God, I'm gonna get, I, I want my body to belong to you. I want it to be, and he says in the next statement, let your body be a living and holy sacrifice to God. The kind that God will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship God. See, God wants us to give our body as a living sacrifice. Literally, to, to lay our body on the altar and say, God, do with me whatever you want. I'm yours. Take a knife and stick it in my heart and slit my throat. Offer me up as a sacrifice. Or send me to China. I'm yours. The problem with a living sacrifice is it keeps crawling off the altar. We put it on there, but we take it off and we crawl off. And yeah, God, I want you to have your way, but China? Really? Alaska? Really? Often, uh, often people will say, uh, you, you know, how'd you get to Alaska? I would say, you don't really, it's a too long of a story. But when I committed my life to Christ as a 17-year-old, uh, getting drunk almost every weekend, just stupid, uh, I, I give my life to Christ. I, uh, Miriam gets upset with me sometimes, or used to, when I'd say to people, I never felt like God called me to be a pastor. She looked at me one day and said, what are we doing this for? <laughs> Uh, if God didn't call you to be a pastor, why aren't we doing this? What I felt like God called me to do was follow him. I felt like he said to me, Brother Dayton, just follow me. Just come follow me. And, and early on in our uh, second year we were or dating, or the, the latter part of the first year we were dating, there was a little Bible school opportunity came in South Carolina. And uh, opportunity to go to this little Bible school, we called it. And it was six weeks in the summertime. And you went on Friday, on Monday morning, got there by noon, checked in, had lunch and Bible classes the afternoon, all day Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday morning, and, and checked out by noon. It was for pastors so they could come and get some more education and learn, and, and anybody wanted to learn the Bible. I felt strong in my heart I should go to that Bible school. <sighs> Miriam, on the other hand, did not share my enthusiasm. She was not a happy camper. And I'm being very kind. I would leave on a Monday. She would be madder, as we say down south, a, madder than a wet setting hen. And she would be angry, upset, mad, upset, heartbroken, disappointed, whatever you want to use. And, and I would come back. We'd talk on the phone all week during the week, but she was not happy uh, by, by when I first left. By the time Friday came, she was really upset. And I'd come home on Friday. She'd be upset. And then Saturday, she'd be upset. Saturday afternoon, she would repent, and we'd make up. And Sunday, we'd all be lovey-dovey. And then Sunday night, she begged me not to go back on Monday. <laughs> <laughs> and I... Yeah, she didn't understand life then. It was just South Carolina. You don't do that. She had no... no. And, and so, she begged me not to go, but guess what? I got up Monday morning, and I went, and then she mad again. Mad all week, come home on Friday mad, Saturday mad, Saturday evening make up, I'd leave on Monday. She went through that little deal for six weeks. I didn't know a clue I was going to be a preacher. I had no idea. I just knew I needed to go to this Bible school. So I went. 
And I went the next year, two years, two summers I went. I, got, I didn't realize it at the time. I just felt like that's what I should do in my heart. It didn't, I didn't, I mean, I drove, I, I, I'd get off work. My dad let me off work. I, I went, I, I did it, and I learned. And lo, lo and behold, I thought I was going in the Navy. I'd set up to go in the Navy, and everything set except raise my right hand and say, I do for me to go in the Navy. I was going in the Navy. I was going to be a diesel mechanic. Imagine that. I was going to be a diesel mechanic, operate heavy equipment. That's what I was going to do. And, and God just had different plans. But he didn't show me all those plans. All he showed me was go to this little Bible school. See, a lot of people don't drive to Anchorage because there's too many moose and too dark and all this stuff and, and you can't see. I, I go to Anchorage 500 feet at a time. That's all my headlights can shine. Kids, let me tell you something. Young people that are here today, let me tell you something. God's not going to give you a road map on what your career and your life's going to be, but he'll show you what to do right now. He'll show you to respect your parents, to respect other people, to get a good education, to learn. Don't waste your high school years. Learn, Vern, learn. Don't be like you adults you know and, and, and never read. Read for your life. We're developing a library at the camp. I'm so excited, all the books that we have, because books will change your life. If, 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 if you read them. A lot of people love, uh, we all love coffee. And uh, I, uh, I spent a dollar this morning on an on a, uh, a, a audio book. Uh, you know, you can't hardly buy a good cup of coffee except at McDonald's and maybe at Shannon and Mike's booth at the deal. She wanted me to throw that plug in there for a dollar. You can get a coffee there for a dollar. But uh, I got a friend who's an investment banker. She calls Starbucks five bucks. Many of y'all spend five bucks, ten bucks a day on coffee. You ain't bought a book and you can't remember when. But just buying a book won't help you no more than that frog deciding to jump. You can buy that book and put it under your pillow and sleep on it. It won't do you no good. You can be like the old saying I heard. It said we buy them books and send them to school and all they do is chew the cover. If you don't read them, it won't do you no good. You got to read, guys. You got to make a choice. And I'm going to talk to the men here a minute. You got to read, guys. 85% of the books in America that are purchased are purchased by women. Well, that says a lot. We'll just leave that right there, okay? I'm just saying, let's break that trend, okay? I, 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 there, there, there's guys write books for guys, but I just read one the other day. A guy wrote a book for guys, but he knew the women were going to read it. <laughs> so he wrote it with that in mind. Understood? I, I mean, it's just a fact. It ain't, well, I don't know about disagreeing. It ain't a disagreement. It's a fact. So I want to challenge you guys. We got free books. I got books. We got, we got books. The camp library is, is available. Any subject you want to read on, you can get knowledge. Present your body. Secondly, oh my, got a, oh geez, that clock. Uh, Romans 12, 2. Oh, man, here's my whole sermon right here. Oh, that's been my introduction. I'm just kidding. But verse 2, Romans 12, 2. Do not copy the behaviors and customs of this world. Well, my dad never read. There's the point. <laughs> well, my mom never did. There's the point. I know some folks that teach more people what not to do than they do what to do by what they do. It, it's a, he's a good example of what not to do. Don't, don't, don't be that. Be the example that's a good example people want to follow. But, be, let God transform you. I love that word transform. And I gotta, I'm going to take five more minutes and I'll be done. Let God transform you. That word transform is the caterpillar butterfly thing. Amen. Let God metamorphosize you from an ugly Mean, evil, addicted, horrible person into a beautiful butterfly. You know how that takes place in the natural? A caterpillar 
climbs up on a limb, chews up a bunch of leaves and spits out this silky stuff and spins a cocoon and dies. Goes inside that tomb. You ever tried to open one of them? They're not easy. It's a sealed tomb and the caterpillar dies. Seven to fourteen days. A beautiful butterfly. Every time you see a beautiful butterfly, it used to be an ugly little woolly worm crawling on the ground, crawling on a tree. Can't be a butterfly if you weren't a woolly worm. Can't be. It's impossible. You can't be a saint, a transformed child of God, unless you were a sinner Amen. who owned it and who began the process of dying to self. See, that's our part. God wants to metamorphosize us. How? By changing the way we think. And that's where the learning... I often hear people say, well, that's just the way I am. Well, then stop it. Well, I like the way I am. Okay, then keep on wearing that robe of foolishness. If you like it, but just be prepared for what's coming. Be prepared when you get caught. Be prepared when your spouse finds out. Is she going to sleep with you again? You going to be alone? See, the choice. I, I said someone about abortion. We were talking about abortion the other day. And I told them, I said, I'm pro-choice. They looked at me. Pastor, you're pro-choice? I said, absolutely. But the choice begins before you hop in the sack. Absolutely. I believe in choice. I believe a woman has a right to choose what happens to her body. But when you abdicate that right, and you let some jerk have relationship with you, you abdicated the right to what comes out. I love you girls. I love you ladies. But I'm just saying, it's not a choice the baby. The choice was before. We have a choice, right for choice. And daddies, you got your choice too. Takes two, you know, but anyway, and that's another story. Lesson. God wants to transform us by changing the way we think. I gotta go. I gotta hurry. Down to the very end again, Kyle. Uh, 1 Peter 2, verse 1. 1 Peter 2, 1. Here's the deal. Get rid of all evil behavior. Be done. <laughs> with deceit, hypocrisy, jealousy, and all unkind speech. Now let me ask you a question. Do you think God would ask you to do something you can't do? No. no he would not. Right answer. You're going to get a star. Okay. Right answer. God would not ask us to do something we can't do. He says, get rid of it. Get of all evil behavior, be done with all deceit, hypocrisy, jealousy, and unkind speech. Well, you know, Pastor, I just, you know, blankety, blank, blank, and let the F's and the R's and the D's and the F's and the S's fly like it, it's all. And you say, well, that's just, that's just the way I do it. Well, then stop it. Get rid of it. Make a choice. Dude, I used to cuss like a sailor. I could, blush, I could make a sailor blush when I was 17 years old. And I didn't give a flying fig who listened. It's a choice. Get rid of it. Well, I'm, I'm, I just been a, I'm a jerk. Well, then quit being a jerk. Unkind speech. Stop talking to your wife that way. Stop talking to your husband that way. Stop talking to your kids that way. Parents, if I could tell you one thing, stop talking to your kids that way. Oh God, I wish I'd heard it when my little boys were little. I didn't know. My daddy yelled and screamed at me, talked to me like I was an idiot. And unfortunately, in those early years, I did the same thing to my kids. I wish somebody would have slapped me. Miriam tried, but I was too stubborn. She tried desperately, but I was too stubborn. I'm pleading with you, make a choice. It's the biggest lie in the world to say I can't. It's a choice. You're an adult. You can do what you doggone well please. 
Don't say I can't. It's a big lie. But when you say I can't, your body shuts down. You don't even try. I plead with you. Make a choice. Choose to get knowledge. Verse 2. Like a newborn baby, crave pure spiritual milk. You ever seen a baby that's really, really hungry? We read when our boys were little moms that an infant and a little tiny baby's hunger pains are 200 times stronger than ours. That's why they scream so hard. So loud when they're hungry. Their hunger pains are 200 times stronger than ours. We read that. I, I remember hearing a story about a wise teacher who, oh Lord, I hate clocks, who, who, who was traveling and this guy came to him. He said, Master, I want wisdom. He said, what do you want? I want wisdom. He said, well, follow me. He took him down to the ocean, took him out in the ocean and said, you want wisdom? He said, yes. He held his head under the water for a few seconds, led him up. He said, what do you want? He said, I want wisdom. He held his head under for a few more seconds. He said, what do you want? He said, I want wisdom. He held him under a long time. Bubbles started coming up. He lifted him up. He said, what do you want? He said, I, I want air. I want air. He said, when you want wisdom like you want air, you'll get wisdom. When you want knowledge more than gold, when you want knowledge like that little 200 times hungry baby wants milk, you'll learn. But as long as you're content to spend three to five hours a day watching idiot stuff on TV, Listening to really stupid crap rap and other garbage music in your brain. You don't get no knowledge. You don't get no wisdom. You're going to continue swimming in Lake Stupid and saying, I don't know what to do. Starts with a tiny step. The journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. In my opinion, stop drinking alcohol, period. Stop drink, smoking dope of any kind, period. Stop looking at porn. Stop being a jerk. Stop a whole lot of things to stop and start filling your mind with God's stuff. Oh, I hate clocks. Would you stand? Father, thank you for a bunch of patient people who listen and go on and, and I'm just so grateful to be able to be here and, and, and to be part of this body. And I, I, we all struggle, Lord. There's none of us got it together. We all mess up, but God, we don't mess up like we used to mess up. We don't mess up. We're not what we ought to be. We're not what we're going to be. We're not what we wish we were, but Father God, I thank you that we're not what we used to be. We're, we're on this journey. We're growing. We're learning. We're becoming. Help us never give up. Help us to never give up. Help us to never stop learning. Help us to set that goal to read a little something every day. Help us to set a goal to read our Bible every day. Read our daily bread. To read every day. And as we do, as we make changes on the inside, there will be changes on the outside. But the changes on the outside don't ever happen to the changes on the inside. Oh God, help us to hear it today. And Father, if there's anyone here today listening or listening by live stream today or podcast anywhere around the world listening today that doesn't know you as their Lord and Savior, they're struggling and they don't understand. Father, help them to know the first step is to surrender, to come to you and say, God, I'm a mess. I can't do this. I'm trying on my own and I can't. And I surrender my body. I surrender my mind, my spirit to you and ask you to come into my life and be my Lord and my Master. God, I give you my mess. I thank you for forgiving me. I believe that Jesus died. I believe he rose from the dead and today I choose him as my Master and I surrender my body to you. Help me to grow. Help me to read your word. Help me to read your word every day to become the man or woman of God you call me to be. I thank you for it. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Hey, if you don't have a Bible, we got Bibles next door. You can download the U version on your phone. God bless you. Have a great afternoon. Go in the name of the Lord. God loves you. You got a great plan for your life.